What's going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and welcome to part one of the Robin Reading Order. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to our patrons for voting for Robin, this reading order. So every month on our Patreon, I put up a poll for our patrons to choose the next reading order and this month they went with Robin. So Big thank you to you all. I couldn't make videos like this possible without all of you. And if you like written documentation of all these reading order videos, that is also found on our Patreon. I think that's at the dollar tier. Today we're going to be focusing on Robin, and I could have taken the easy route and just focus on my favorite Robin, which is Tim Drake. However, there have been different people that have taken on the mask of Robin, and we're going to be talking about each one of those. So... There will be a part two, so don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. That's the best way to let you know when our videos are going up, and that will come out sometime later this month. Now, before going any further, I do want to stress that I'm not going to be talking about any multiverse characters here. So there's not going to be a mention of Carrie Kelly, with the exception of what I just did, or any alternate reality Robins. I'm strictly just talking about Robin from the main DC universe. So, we got a lot to talk about. Let's go ahead and get started. And we're starting with Dick Grayson, the very first Robin. Dick Grayson, the very first kid that got to be Robin. Batman's first sidekick. And this is where I start telling people to start reading about the character of Robin with Robin Year One. This, of course, was written in the late 90s, and it collects Robin Year One, which goes back to Dick Grayson's first year as Robin. Now, this, of course, is the modern interpretation of that story. If you want to go back and read the original stories, uh, the way they were originally written and drawn, by all means, there are Golden Age collections. So there's Batman, Golden Age, Omnibus, Volumes 1, and that's where, really, Robin first appeared. And the earlier team-ups of Batman and Robin are through those Batman Golden Age books. There is a Silver Age book, but it's not out yet, and Robin does appear in those books, but he is a little bit different. And then uh, there are a couple of Robin Bronze Age. There's two archives of the Robin Bronze Age, and there is a Robin Bronze Age omnibus. But my DC, as I've mentioned on some of these videos, starts with Crisis on Infinite Earths. So that's what I'm mainly focusing on. But if you want to go back to the very beginning and read about Dick Grayson hanging out with Batman and then eventually the Teen Titans... Uh, there is a Teen Titans uh, omnibus, the classic omnibus. By all means, go for that. But this is where I tell people to start reading about Robin. So this is a phenomenal series. This one's written by Chuck Dis uh, Dixon, Scott Beatty, uh, Marcos Martin supplying a lot of the artwork in here. And just retells the story, modernizing it a little bit, of the first year that Dick Grayson was Robin. That story has also been retold through this particular book right here, and that is Absolute Batman Dark Victory, or just Batman Dark Victory. It's one of the Jeff Loeb, Tim Cell books. This one takes place after Long Halloween, and it's actually a continuation of that particular story. But there are elements of Robin Year One that are included in here. So if you want to check that out, this is the best place to find it it is in batman dark victory this story right here is still canon meaning that it's still part of dc continuity uh it's available in trade paperback format it's available in uh hardcover and we haven't seen a single robin yet he believe me he appears later on but i don't want to spoil things that happen later on uh it's available in an omnibus edition absolute edition there is a deluxe hardcover coming out as well now you're probably wondering why i want you to come to batman cape crusader volume 2 well, Cape Crusader Volume 1 will be in here uh, as well. But this has Batman Year 3, which even though it's not in continuity, I think it's still important to read because this technically is Robin Year 1. So this is Mark Wolfman and Pat Broderick's take on Robin's first year as Batman or how the two were introduced. It's kind of a flashback story because you have Dick Grayson now grown up and become Nightwing. So for people wondering when did that transition take place, when did Robin decide to leave Batman, it's actually done through a series of flashback stories. Uh, there was really never an issue where Dick Grayson said, yo, deuces, I'm out. Sorry, man, you're going to have to hang on by yourself. There really wasn't that transition. He just kind of got up and left. Uh, he went to college, joined the Teen Titans, which I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second, 
and it was just kind of understood there really wasn't an issue where he quit being Robin because he still was working with Batman from time to time and then Crisis on Infinite Earths happened and that changed and confused things a lot but there are some issues where Dick Grayson does have a flashback of leaving Batman because he was hurt and Batman was like you can't be Robin anymore and I'll talk about that when I talk about Jason Todd here in a few but yes this is the next place to come and then I mentioned earlier the new Teen Titans so if you want to see Dick Grayson Robin hang out with friends more his age that are not all gloomy and dark maybe with the exception of Raven then this is the best place to come and this is continuing into other Omnis there's a total of five of them hopefully volume six will come back to the catalog and this is where you'll see Dick Grayson becoming Nightwing and I've done a Nightwing reading order if you want to check that out I uh, just click on the link above but yes this is the best place to come for that story where Dick Grayson is just rolling solo for a while becomes a part of this team becomes leader of this team and then ends up leaving the Robin persona behind to become Nightwing and all of that is done through these pages of the New Teen Titans. Because there really isn't a lot for Dick Grayson Robin post-Crisis on Infinite Earths. Because the next kid we're about to meet got to be Robin from the get-go after Crisis on Infinite Earths. And this trade paperback, it's ridiculous how expensive this thing has gotten. But this is Second Chances. And this works as a reintroduction to the character of Jason Todd. And I mean a reintroduction because he had already been introduced pre-crisis on infinite earths but because crisis kind of wiped the slate clean dc decided well you know let's retell how him and batman met even though he only appeared like 50 issues before this one so that's right based on the cover he's trying to steal the tires off of the batmobile and this is how batman meets his new robin and it's Jason Todd. Jason Todd was a little bit different than Dick Grayson. He wasn't such a happy-go-lucky kid, even though horrible things happened in Dick Grayson's life. Uh, Jason Todd was a little angrier. He was a little loose cannon. Uh, he didn't really listen to Batman. And honestly, back when we were, when I was a kid reading this stuff, he wasn't that well liked either. A lot of us that were reading comics at the time just weren't the biggest fans of his. But there isn't really a lot of Jason Todd either uh, because things are about to change. So now we go back to Cape Crusader Volume 1. So if you want to read a little more about Batman and Jason Todd Robin, uh, check out my Batman reading order. There really isn't a lot. So remember when I was talking about there wasn't really an issue where Dick Grayson decided to get up and leave and stop being Robin? Uh, there wasn't, but there is a flashback, com and that takes place in this particular uh, trade paperback. There's a conversation between Dick Grayson and Batman about how can Batman let another kid be Robin when Dick Grayson felt like he was fired from being Robin. like Because he thought, or Bruce Wayne thought, hey, your life is in danger, you're just a kid, you cannot be Robin. So how can Batman let Jason Todd be Robin when Dick felt betrayed? Which, of course, that big paradox really sets up a lot of the things that happens later in Batman's life, like the Nightfall story. Why he gave someone else the Batman cowl to become Batman instead of Dick Grayson. And that was a big question between fans. Uh, but that's this is the trade paperback where that conversation takes place. And sadly, this is also the trade paperback where there's more Jason Todd, and that's about to come to an end with this particular hardcover. And this is Batman, A Death in the Family uh, hardcover. But this also collects A Lonely Place of Dying. So this particular volume works as both a ending to Jason Todd's time as Robin and a beginning of someone else that's going to take the cape and the mask of Robin. So this has the storyline of A Death in the Family and you're smart enough you can probably figure out what happens through these pages why Jason Todd stops being Robin there was a 900 number involved I need my 75 cents back but that's a whole nother story and later on because Batman needs a new Robin there's this kid that was introduced a few issues before this crossover a lonely place of dying um, his name is Tim Drake who kind of put things together kind of figured out that Batman was Bruce Wayne that Dick Grayson was the original Robin that Jason Todd was the second Robin and what he tries to do Tim Drake a young kid 
who who doesn't have a horrible past. He's not an orphan. He actually has his mom and dad. They're still alive. He tries to get Batman and Robin back together. He gets Dick Grayson to come back and say, look, Batman is really depressed. Really depressed. He needs a Robin. In order for him to function, in order for him to have balance in life, the darkness needs to be balanced with the light. And Dick Grayson, of course, says, I can't. Bruce made decisions. I'm my own man. I'm leading a team of the Teen Titans. I'm, I'm not Robin anymore. I'm Nightwing. So... This starts the age of Tim Drake becoming Robin. Now, he's not officially Robin through here, but we'll get there. And here we have the very first Robin trade paperback with Tim Drake in the role of Robin. So, what makes this boy wonder stand out? What, what is it about him that a lot of fans really can relate to? Well, Tim Drake isn't like Dick Grayson or Jason Todd. Tim Drake isn't a, an acrobatic star or, or a kid that just has instinct. He just happens to be a big brain and pretty much a huge detective. All of this, of course, like I mentioned um, right before this in The Lonely Place of Dying, comes from the fact that he was a kid during that horrible circus incident that killed the Flying Graysons, Dick's mom and dad, and he remembered... The acrobatic moves that Dick Grayson could do. And then later on when he was watching a clip of Batman and Robin because he was just obsessed with the dynamic duo, he put two and two together and said, oh wait, that's the same move that kid from the Flying Graysons did. And then from that he figured out that Bruce Wayne was Batman. So it's a really interesting dynamic between him and Bruce because he's trying to become Robin. And finally after all this time, this is the volume where it happens and Robin Reborn, he gets a new costume to make him stand out. Because both Jason Todd and Dick Grayson use the same costume. That costume's now being retired and Tim Drake gets his own costume. And here he goes solo in his first miniseries that introduces his very first big arch nemesis when he's rolling solo. And that is King Snake. And he'll play a part through Tim Drake's life off and on but this is the very first mini series right here where he travels to paris and he's on his own he's a teenager on his own and on to volume two triumphant and one thing i didn't say about the mini series is that it's drawn by tom lyle all three of the robin mini series are drawn by tom lyle and rest in peace i always think of robin when i think of tom lyle because i remember these mini series being an important part of me growing up i really enjoyed them so we have the return of King Snake and his goons in Gotham, but the big thing that's collected in here is Robin to the Joker's Wild. So Joker had something to do with Jason Todd no longer being Robin. And it's always been this fear for Robin to go up against the Joker. Well, during this particular miniseries, Batman is, well, I'll just say he's out of the picture. Robin at one point thinks he's dead. So it's up to Tim Drake to take down the clown prince. And man, it's an awesome scene the way that they confront each other. The confrontation is amazing between both of these characters. This one, of course, written by Chuck Dixon. And then we have Robin 3. So this one here is pretty much a team up between Tim Drake Robin and this young lady right there, the Huntress. And of course, King Snake and his goons again are back. And Solo. That one says it all. So it's also important if you want to go back to the Batman reading order to see the dynamic duo work together more to check out some of those issues of Batman and Detective Comics, especially during this time. So it's also during this time that Bruce Wayne, well, he takes a leave of absence from the role of Batman and leaves this new guy in charge. Instead of Dick Grayson, he puts this gentleman named Jean-Paul Valley in charge of being Batman. Now, both Tim Drake and John Paul Valley, they started off as pretty good friends. And then John Paul Valley just goes down this deep rabbit hole of letting the system work for him. So eventually, Robin decides to fly solo because he figures out that John Paul Valley Batman is freaking nuts. And that's where this takes place with the very first issue right here, Outcast, of his first Robin ongoing series in the modern age. 
But here you have Azrael just pretty much kicking him out, firing him. And Tim Drake's like, nah, man, I'm quitting. You ain't going to fire me. And rolls solo and ends up leaving the Batcave. Until, of course, Bruce Wayne returns as Batman. But let's not jump that far ahead yet, even though it's going to happen soon. Here we have Volume 4. This, of course, written all by Chuck Dixon. We have Tom Grumet doing amazing artwork. And Tom Grumet has no stranger to drawing kids. Uh, he had drawn New Teen Titans for a while. And we also have Phil Jimenez doing some fill-in issues and some of the showcase stories. So we have some team-ups with Nightwing here. Uh, but it's mainly Tom Grumet drawing Robin. And yes, we have now Bruce Wayne coming back to the role of Batman. Taking it back from... Jean-Paul Valley. We also have the Prodigal storyline going through this particular volume right here. And then we start getting... Oh, wait. And then we have this awesome team up right here of Zero Hour. So there's a Robin Zero in here as well. This book's a lot of fun. This is the team up with Dick Grayson. And just a retelling of the mistakes that they've made as Robin. It's a great story. So let's go to the next volume. Which, sadly, is the last one because DC discontinued this line. But here is War of the Dragons. So this is the crossover, first of all, with Detective Comics. Uh, where it's the return of King Snake and all his goons are trying to sell drugs in Gotham City. And Batman's like, not on my watch. So he teams up with Robin. But this also helps to serve as the big relationship starting point between Robin and and spoiler so spoiler stephanie brown is the daughter of this character named the clue master who's kind of like the riddler uh, but she unlike her father decides not to become a supervillain and become a superhero instead known as the spoiler well her and tim had been crushing on each other for a while and throughout this series here is where they start developing a relationship this is also where tom grumet ends up leaving the book and mike waringo the late mike waringo takes over the book and becomes the ongoing artist on Robin. But as I was saying, sadly, this is the last trade paperback, but not the last time we'll see some Robin uh, issues collected in collected editions. I mean, after all, that's what this reading order is about. And yes, annuals one, two, and three are in here. So even though we have about five issues in between that last Robin volume and this, but this is the next place to come, and that is Contagion. The big crossover, and man, this one kind of hits close to what's been going on lately. But this is a big disease that is coming and killing the citizens of Gotham City. So it's up to Batman and friends to try to figure out where this disease is coming from and how it's spreading. And on top of that, find a cure. Well, something big happens through these pages to the character of Tim Drake, Robin. But this is a big crossover event with Nightwing, Azrael, Catwoman. All these characters get involved. And I've talked about this in my Batman reading order. Next up is Batman Legacy, Volume 1 of 2. So this is the next crossover event right after Contagion. And during this time, it felt like the editors at DC were trying to get the characters of the Bat Family closer together. So they started probably mandating a lot more and more crossovers. And it was a not company-wide crossover, but a Bat Family crossover. So you had Azrael more involved, Catwoman was more involved, Nightwing and Robin, Detective Comics. Hell, they even brought over Shadow of the Bat and uh, Legends of the Dark Knight, which originally were standalone titles that happened before Batman and Robin got together. But anyway, that's what this is during that time. We, have, we seem to have one crossover after another. But it all rolls in together, I swear. Ever since Nightfall, all of it keeps continuing. And I wish this stuff was collected in omnibus format as a matter of fact this is one of my most wanted omnibus but this is legacy volume one which takes us to volume two now when you get into legacy make sure you read or buy the latest printing because the first printing was missing a lot of issues and it's only one volume whereas the latest printing is two volumes but legacy it reveals who is behind the disease that killed off a lot of citizens in gotham city and batman going after this character so that's what Legacy serves as a purpose. And Legacy rolls into Cataclysm. And you find Cataclysm in the pages of The Road to No Man's Land Omnibus or in the trade paperback Cataclysm and the trade paperback's Road to No Man's Land. So this is what I meant. One event leads into the next. So Cataclysm is this giant earthquake that shakes 
Gotham to the core. It destroys so much of Gotham. So it's up to the Bat family to try and rescue all these citizens that are buried under the rubble, all these friends. And it's it's heartbreaking, so much so that it leads into Road to No Man's Land, which changes up the game for the Bat family once again. And I'll talk a little bit about that and, and what that game is, um, because it really impacts the Bat family. And I have to talk a little bit about a spoiler when we get to No Man's Land. But this is the road to No Man's Land, collected in an omnibus format, and like I mentioned, a couple of trade paperbacks, and of course the Cataclysm trade paperback. And honestly, all that content is identical to the content that is found in this omnibus. So if you want to know a little more about Tim Drake during this time, because there's not a lot of collected editions for just his solo story, you can find him in the pages of Young Justice. This is mine that has been custom bound. But there's a series of trade paperbacks. I think there's a total of five of them so far. They need just one more, I swear. But this is where you'll find Robin hanging out with his friend Connor, Superboy, and Bart, who is Impulse, and then, of course, Wonder Girl and all these other characters that would eventually join the team, but this is where you will find Robin. He's hanging out with Young Justice, kind of like Dick Grayson was hanging out with the Teen Titans as Nightwing. But this is all written by Peter David. Most of the artwork in here supplied by Todd Nock. It's a wonderful series. And obviously I wanted so bad enough that I made my own custom Omnis. Believe it or not, the next place to go is the DC One Million Omnibus. This is the only place that has Robin One Million. And it, this was a big DC wide event, so it was every title just jumped into the one million, and they're all different characters. This was originally the brainchild of Grant Morrison on their run in JLA, and then DC decided to just expand it into the entire DC universe. But this is the next place to go Batman No Man's Land. So this is where I have to talk a little bit about a spoiler. So if you don't want to know anything about this and skip to the next section, by all means, I'll put that in the description of the video when I talk about, I guess, No Man's Land Volume 2. So it makes No Man's Land for you brave souls that are sticking around here or don't care about spoilers or, or have already read this stuff. What makes No Man's Land interesting is that Batman has just given up. Bruce Wayne has left Gotham City because he has no faith in its citizens or the city itself. It's dead to him. He left. So it's up to the police force and, of course, all the goons. Like, they're separating the city. This, of course, after the cataclysm earthquake. So there's different sectors of the city now that are uh, ran by different gangs or the police squad has taken over. And all this because Bruce Wayne has left. Batman has left. And it's, there are some damn good moments in this series. I know it's long and, you know, it's hit and miss with a lot of people, but I happen to love it. I, I think it's a great series. But because Batman left, that put a lot of mistrust with his Bat family, including Robin. So Robin during this time really isn't talking to Bruce Wayne. He's kind of lost faith in his mentor. You know, they were the dynamic duo and Batman just got up and left. Now let's talk about Volume 2 so we can talk about the non-spoilery stuff. So here we have Volume 2, No Man's Land. Again, issues of Robin collected through here. But it's one big continuing story. In order to enjoy all of this, you have to read every single issue. I mean, to me at least, as a completist, I love that. I love that it's so interconnected. Uh, the things that are happening in just Young Justice are affecting the things that are happening in Detective Comics. So I thought that was really cool. I love when comics just seem to talk to each other. Um, or when editors work together to put one big epic story out there for the people to enjoy. Because sometimes when there's a big, huge, epic crossover, it's weird that it doesn't affect little corners of the DC Universe or the Marvel Universe. Marvel does the same thing. Um, but me, I'm a big fan of something like a small ripple affecting the entire DC Universe. And that's what No Man's Land felt like. Moving on to Volume 3. So while you can enjoy those Robin issues, if ever collected in trade paperbacks, as of this video they're not, they're just collected in this collection, uh, I think you benefit a lot more from knowing what the hell is going on in Gotham City and why the world seems to have just fallen apart. So I've talked about this particular storyline in my Batman reading order if you want to check that out for a more in-depth look at 
this particular story right here. And one thing I didn't talk about is the connection between Tim Drake and Two-Face Harvey Dent. Seems like Harvey Dent was kind of like the first super villain he fought because he helped Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. Like, he helped save them even long before he became Robin. That was kind of almost his baptism of fire. And it seems like they always, writers, no matter who it is, keeps bringing back that story of just Harvey Dent and the relationship he has with Tim Drake. And here we have volume four. Now I did mention that King Snake was his actual first supervillain, and it was when he was rolling solo. But as a team, it goes back to Two-Face being his very first supervillain. Now all of this is gonna be collected. So far we have a volume one of A No Man's Land. It should be collected in two volumes because it's a huge story. I mean, if you look at how thick these trade paperbacks are, we're looking at well over 2,000 pages. So, yeah, I think they would have to split these up into two volumes. Asriel looking all different and saintly like these days. So next up, we have Officer Down, which is a story that wasn't collected in New Gotham. I don't know why. So there's two trade paperbacks of New Gotham, but for some reason, they don't collect this particular story. And this is just basically Officer Down. You see it from the cover. Commissioner Gordon is gunned down, and it's up to the Bat family to try to solve who shot and try to murder Commissioner Gordon. And that's it. Leading us to Batman Bruce Wayne murderer. Question mark. Is he a murderer? Is he being framed? What's going on exactly? So yes, there has been a murder at the Wayne Manor, and... Bruce Wayne has been arrested because he is the prime suspect. So it's up to the Bat family, including Robin. So issues of Robin collected in here to clear his name. But is Bruce Wayne going to let that happen? Or is Bruce Wayne going to take this into his own hands? Well, to find that out, you have to read Bruce Wayne Fugitive. That doesn't contain any issues of Robin, so I didn't put it on this list. Now, with Teen Titans and Young Justice coming to an end, DC decided to revamp their teen titles so we had outsiders and we had the new teen titans this one here written by jeff johns collected in trade paperback formats and one omnibus i love this era of teen titans um you know to me my era will always be marf wolfman and george perez but this comes close so this is a new team of teens with robin superboy Cassie, Wonder Girl, Starfire, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Bart as Kid Flash. And damn, is this good. It's Mike McCone drawing it, and of course, Jeff Johns just kicking all kinds of ass. I love this series, but this is where you'll see the Boy Wonder with his new team. And finally, we can go back to these trade paperbacks. And believe it or not, this was printed long before those fat trades of Tim Drake's uh, original Robin series. Uh, now we have Bill Wellingham taking over the role of writing for Tim Drake. So, honestly, this era right here, I know not a lot of people enjoy, but I found it kind of fun. It reminded me a lot of a manga because Tim Drake is trying to find this balance of being a superhero, but also being a teenager going to school. And the unmasked part comes because, well, remember when I said that Tim Drake... Um, is unlike the orphans of Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. Uh, he has a, he has a family. Well, unfortunately, something happened to his mom, and his whole family dynamic is about to change uh, when his dad finds out, you know, that he's a superhero and he wants him to give up that life. And all of that leads into this big event, Identity Crisis. So this is Identity Crisis. And while this is a big DC event, I think this affects a lot of the characters in the DC universe. And one of them being Tim Drake. Something horrible happens here to Tim Drake's life. So if you want to find out exactly what it is, and I know this is a series that, you know, people are really split with this. I myself, I've talked about how I'm not a big fan of this particular story, but there are people that love it. So you can judge for yourself by reading it, but this is the next stop for your Robin reading order. So because of the events of Identity Crisis, Batman doesn't necessarily fire Tim. I think Tim just needs a break from being a superhero. He is going through this just whirlwind of depression and having to deal with his own personal life. So we get Stephanie Brown taking the role of Robin. And I don't give a crap what anybody says. 
Dan Didio included, she was a Robin. She is the fourth Robin and will always be. I never understood the disrespect for the character of Dan Didio just saying, yeah, but she really wasn't a Robin. I get it. She was a short-lived Robin, but she still was a Robin. Batman accepted her as a Robin. So this is War Games. That's when all of this takes place. This is where you'll see Robin 126 to 129, along with this big crossover. Sure, she wasn't Robin for very long, but she still was a Robin. And she tries to help Batman out. Now, she does some reckless things that kind of remind Batman of Jason Todd. So he does end up firing her. And that leads to the story arc in the second book here of War Games, Volume 2, where he fires her from being Robin, and she takes on the mantle of spoiler again. And Tim Drake steps back in as Robin. And something horrible happens to Stephanie through these pages here. Again, this is another one of those books that is kind of controversial because of the treatment of the character. Uh, but I'll let you figure that out uh, for yourself by reading it. She's not the only character that something happens to. Though. There's a lot of other characters that are kind of written off for a while. But yes, this is War Games Volume 2 where you'll find that continuing story. What happens to Stephanie Brown as Robin. Robin, Batgirl, Fresh Blood. So everything is just falling apart for Tim Drake. And his whole life is being shattered. All the people that he loved, he feels like, have left him. So he decides, with, of course, Bruce Wayne's blessing, to leave Gotham City. To leave the school that he was in. And move to Bloodhaven, which is where Nightwing takes place. I think I've done a reading order of all these characters. Batgirl, Batman, Nightwing, uh, Birds of Prey. Was Robin my last one? That's crazy. Uh, by the way, Part 2 will also include Red Robin. So... Tune in for that. Come back for that. But yes, this is the next place to go. Next up is Robin to Kill a Bird. And the crazy thing about this, this trade paperback is long out of print. And it sucks because there's a lot of people that want to read these stories. And DC announced and took off the catalog a Bill Willingham Robin omnibus. It was never officially an omnibus, but based on the uh, price and the page count, it was going to be an omnibus. And now it's off of the catalog. I don't know if they'll ever go back to it. I don't know if instead they'll release it as a compendium or a trade paperback. Whatever format they release it in, I hope they do. So again, Robin getting used to living in Bloodhaven. You have Damien Scott supplying a lot of the artwork in here. Bill Willingham, of course, doing a lot of the writing. And you have the return of this character right here. I cannot remember who this guy, Johnny something. Johnny Demonic, I think is what his name was. Uh, supposed to be Robin's worst arch nemesis uh and you also have the continuing relationship that he had been building with St stephanie brown what ended up happening with that the outcome of everything that happened in war games so he's kind of going the route of jason todd a little bit until batman steps in this is by the way drawn by scott mcdaniel which takes us to days of fire and madness now scott mcdaniel is the ongoing artist and bill willingham of course writing uh, the story we have this new character that just kind of came out of nowhere his name is the veteran who has kind of hired tim drake to be part of the militant army that he leads to go and help citizens so this is a big uh team up with the shadow pact who were characters that during the prelude to the infinite crisis uh, that team was formed and speaking of infinite crisis you see the omax here and all of this helps to lead in to the big event known as infinite crisis however before we go to infinite crisis i urge you to read issues 29 through 33 of teen titans and robin 146 through 147 it's a crossover called life and death and it's a very damn good crossover and it's all found through the pages of this particular omnibus or in a trade paperback called life and death now as of this video this particular omnibus is being reprinted in 2022 now we can go back to this infinite crisis i swear i have this book either as a beginning or as a bookend of just about every one of my reading orders but this is the one that we're ending it on today so this is the big crossover for dc and this restarts the entire universe so the next time we come back to this reading order we'll have a year that has jumped in the time of these characters and it has affected robin not just changing his costume but tim drake has been affected 
huge by the events that happen in this particular book. So that, as they say, is that. Now, some of these books are available from our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They are making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the check out and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order this promotion is valid for u.s customers only cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more and that was part one of the robin reading order let me know in the comments down below what you would have added what you would have taken away and if i left anything out by all means, please leave those comments down below. What you think was important and crucial to the reading order of these characters. Yes, I could have really gone deep into Batman, but I wanted to focus more on the Robin Solo stories. Please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel. And if you want to join our Patreon, one of the tiers is voting for the reading orders. All of that information is in the description below. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to come back for part two. And everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe, much love.